cheap stocks. Why you should avoid cheap stocks in the stock market and why value is a trap. Let me know your thoughts, whether you believe it's best to buy or to leave alone cheap stocks in the stock market. You can go to beststockstrategy.com and enter in your email address and receive over $400 worth of free training materials. I am someone who likes good values. So if I see something and I believe that it's at a good price, then I will buy it and I'm much more likely to purchase that product if, in my opinion, the price is lower. The problem with that methodology when you apply it to the stock market is that you're not exactly sure how much an underlying security is worth because you're not actually sure what you're buying. You see, if I buy a product at Whole Foods or a local market, I know exactly what I'm getting. But if you buy a stock, you're not really sure what you're getting. There are so many variables that you're just simply unsure how much that product is worth. So again, if I see a product, then you can make a quick assertion regarding whether, and you can quickly ascertain whether that product is worth $20 to you. And if it's selling for 15, then you're going to buy it for 15 and then you're gonna realize $5 of marginal utility. With the stock market, it's different because if you buy a stock like Facebook at $170 a share, you are not sure whether Facebook's true value or whether it'll be trading at in three months at 150 or 200, you have no idea. So essentially all you're doing is price guessing. That's why I do not think that you should look for value stocks. Instead, what I believe you should do is look for market leading stocks that have undergone a relatively short, a relative short term weakness. For example, last week, which is the first week of April in 2019, Raytheon was trading at around $187.50 on Monday or Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, it fell around $8 and it fell all the way down from its closing price on Tuesday, which is around $183 to around $100. It fell $8 on Wednesday to around $175. So in my opinion, because nothing has changed with that stock, I can make the perception that, or I can make the, um, the argument that Raytheon, which is a market leading stock along with Lockheed Martin and Boeing, even though Boeing is more commercial as opposed to governmental contracts in defense, but Raytheon, Lockheed Martin are market leading stocks in the defense sector. And on Monday, Raytheon was trading at around $187.50. And then on Wednesday, because some bad news came out, the market decided to overreact and then punish Raytheon to the extent that it sold off its shares. And now that same stock is trading at $175. In my perception, that represents a ideal scenario for you to sell a put. However, because you're not sure what the true value of Raytheon is, let's say the market falls another four or five percent on Thursday and Friday. As a result, because most of the stocks are highly correlated to the SPY index or the S&P 500, Raytheon would likely follow the trend of the overall market and sell down. Maybe if it would sell all the way down to 165. That's why I like selling options because when you sell option premium, you're able to build in a substantial safety net. So when Raytheon sold down, I recognize Raytheon is a market leading stock in a solid industry with predictable revenues and cash flow and governmental contracts. It sold off around 9% from its high when it was trading at 187.50 and now it's trading at 175. I could then sell a 160 put and collect around $1.50 a premium. And as long as the expiration is not too far in the future, I could even close it out early and be able to capture anywhere from 50 to 65% of the premium. And that type of trade will be profitable around 95% of the time. If you contrast this with simply believing that a stock has sold off, you have no idea where the bottom is. And yes, you can make an argument that by buying Raytheon or selling a put on Raytheon, you still have no idea where the bottom is. And you would be 100% correct. The issue with that line of thinking is that because with everything that we do, we are just price guessing. By selling options, you might as well give yourself a wide moat and a high statistical probability of profit and choose to sell 
a 160 put, which would be $15 away from the current market price of Raytheon. So remember, we build in the why, we build in the moat, we build in the safety net, and we recognize that, hey, Raytheon is falling 9% in two days. I have no idea where the bottom is. Do I believe that Raytheon is going to fall an incremental $15 to 160? No, I don't. But I can't tell the future, so I don't know. As a result, I'm going to sell the 160 put and collect a $1.50 in premium, and this trade will be profitable around 95% of the time. But the reason why we don't simply buy, buy value is because we have no idea what the real price of that stock is. Remember, if the real even if you take a stock like Amazon, which historically goes up, if this straight line represents the fair market value of Amazon, you're going to see the actual price be wild in its gyrations. Sometimes it'll be overpriced, other times it'll be underpriced, and it's just gonna swing. But the long term, it's going to likely increase in price along a specific trading range. But during the short term, the prices are very inaccurate. That's why when a stock reports bad news, then there'll be a massive sell-off, and when a stock reports good news, then there's usually a massive upswing only to see some type of retracement either to the bottom or, or a, a type of retracement where it's going to retrace some of its early losses. This is something that we call reversion to the mean, and it's very important because what it tells you is that don't try to guess what the future prices are. Instead, put the odds in your favor. And this is one of the main reasons why we simply do not buy value. And the reason is that unlike something that you can pick up at the store and you say, this has $20 of value to me, it's trading at $15. As a result, I'm going to buy it. When you buy a stock, you have no idea what the real value is. And that's one of the main reasons why you should not buy value. Instead, what you should do is you should have your watch list be filled with market leading securities and then get comfortable with the recent trading range of those market leading securities, wait for them to sell off, and then you sell a put. Or if we're in a stagnant or a bear market like we were in October or December of 2018, you would wait for a relative high in those specific stocks and then you would sell a call option. That's how you generate revenue during a stagnant or a bear market. David Jaffe with BestStockStrategy.com. You can go to BestStockStrategy.com and enter in your email address to receive over $400 worth of free training materials. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below, and I appreciate your attention.